So we're gonna go ahead and remove the cap first, make sure we don't contaminate it. Go in with the pipette, collect about a mil. Again, we only wanna fill this vial about a quarter full. That's all you're gonna need for analysis. Of course, we're gonna cap our evidence and then label it appropriately. We're at the National Forensic Science Technology Center to discuss field forensics with Kevin Lothridge. We'll even see a mock clan lab and a demo today. I'm Grant Coffey, and this is Flair Prime. As a hazmat responder, I've had access to a lot of technologies for safe scene response and threat analysis. What I've seen in over 40 years is a significant improvement in technology. Chemical detectors, for example, are smaller, faster, and more intelligent. In fact, what were once considered lab-based technologies like GCMS are now fieldable, and these fieldable versions rival the capabilities offered by lab-based instruments. And what organizations like NFSTC have figured out is that the non-scientists really can be trained to use these technologies in the field. And that means real-time, actionable intelligence is at the responder's fingertips. Kevin Lothridge is the Executive Director at the National Forensic Science Technology Center at Florida International University here in Largo, Florida. Here he is today to talk about chemical analysis by GCMS, what's different in a lab versus on scene, how forensic science has been simplified, and maybe even give us some real-world examples of how GCMS has solved problems for responders. My name is Kevin Lothridge. I'm the Executive Director at the National Forensic Science Technology Center at Florida International University. The NFSTC was formed 23 years ago to provide consulting and forensic science support to the nation's forensic laboratories. We work with state and local forensic laboratories, state and local law enforcement, the federal government agencies such as the Department of Defense and the Department of State. We also do work for international governments. We use a wide range of chemical technologies in our training here at the NFSTC. We use everything from simple colorimetric tests to spectroscopy such as Raman and FTIR and deployable mass spectrometry like the Griffin 460. Forensic chemistry in the laboratory is based on non-portable, non-fieldable equipment which are laboratory grade, whereas fieldable or deployable forensic technologies look at things that are battery powered, may be simple to use, easily transportable, and give the same type of data, but just much easier for the end user. For the first time ever, the non-scientist is actually getting information at point of collection. In the past, they would collect a sample, send it off to a laboratory, wait however long, get the results back, and then complete their investigation. Now they're getting actual chemical data at this point of collection, being able to make decisions as far as safety, as well as what other things they need to do at a scene. Let's take the example of a drug investigation. A first responder or a law enforcement officer uh, find some unknown white powder. If they can actually analyze that white powder, they can determine if it's a hazard to the public, if the person needs to be charged with a crime, or it's a non-controlled substance or an unknown material. The lab scientists currently get in samples and do their analysis and generate a report. In the future, with these tests being done in the field, they'll be providing quality assistance to the people in the field doing the analysis, as well as reviewing data and giving interpretations of that data. Here alongside Mr. Lothridge are a number of forensic scientists familiar with fieldable technology. In fact, there are a few who know it better than Kirk Grates, NFSTC at FIU's Forensic Chemistry Section lead. So we're going to go ahead and remove the cap first, make sure we don't contaminate it, go in with the pipette, collect about a mil. Again, we only want to fill this vial about a quarter full. That's all you're going to need for analysis. Of course, we're going to cap our evidence and then label it appropriately. NFSTC has a lot of different scenarios. We have blown up cars, cars that are actually intact. We have HME labs, we have an apartment. We also have, as you can see here, we have an actual clan laboratory. And it's good to have those different scenarios for our students, just to introduce them to a lot of different things that they actually can run into. The very first thing anytime uh, we teach the students when they come on to an objective or on a scene is safety first. So they would assess, make sure it's safe, they would actually enter that particular scenario and then go ahead and start photographing, you know, collect that documentation. And then when it comes to chemistry, they would actually then start to collect very small amounts, assessing their sensitivity and collect enough to do analysis either while they're there or back in another laboratory or also for submission of evidence to an upper level laboratory. 
Dangers are definitely toxic industrial chemicals, uh, volatile organic chemicals or VOCs. Um, definitely we, we teach our first responders, military um, and such, again, safety first. They're gonna make sure they have a multi-ray uh, to ensure that the vapors that are actually in the air are safe. We talk about other PPEs that they might be re uh, wearing, maybe self-contained breathing apparatus, gloves as like what I'm wearing, safety glasses that, you know, such like that and then actually be able to go into the room and assess from there uh, how to collect. The way we would ap approach this powder uh, in this particular scenario, being that it is on a surface, we'd actually use a swab. We'd actually rub the swab onto the bulk material because uh, it is considered bulk because it is visible to the naked, unaided eye. We'd put it into a glass vial, break it off, and then seal it. And if they had time, we'd actually recommend that they collect more than one sample. Therefore, they can uh, do analysis outside the, uh, the actual scenario HUD itself, back at their uh, laboratory, or be able to submit it up to a, another laboratory for evidence. The benefits of having actual field portable GC mass spectrometry would be able to, in this particular case, you can actually analyze volatile organic chemicals as well as toxic industrial chemicals in real time. You can also collect uh, liquids, powders, gels, and even swabs, do a little bit of sample prep put it in that field portable GC mass spec, be able to separate different components of that particular chemical, be able to identify all the chemical components and do it accurately, having a gold standard way of identification and detection. My role, uh, various different things, but one of it is reach back. So a former student, typically, or somebody that maybe I haven't trained before, will actually reach back for support. And that would include, especially for GC mass spec, data interpretation. Hey, Kurt, <laughs> we're having some problems identifying this particular chemical. Is it compound X? And then I'll actually look at that data and say, yeah, absolutely, you're correct. It is compound X. But you might have missed something. Hey, there's actually compound Y, maybe even Z. All right. I also help with troubleshooting. Sometimes, uh, you know, these are non-scientists. They need a little bit of scientific support. And I'll fill in helping them um, with maybe maintenance or, you know, again, troubleshooting of the instrument. The main takeaway from this is actually being safe. Anytime you go on target or on a scene, no matter you know, what detection device you have, just make sure you're wearing the proper PPEs. It's amazing the advancements we've seen in technology capability, but even more importantly, the advancements in training. Now the P in PRIME stands for preparation, and NFSTC is leading the way in helping responders prepare for their forensic-based missions. If you're not yet familiar with NFSTC, get over to their website today at www.nfstc.org. Look at their online and in-person forensic science training courses. These courses are tried and trusted by civilian and military responders. One of my favorite resources is the Forensics video series, which looks at what you see on crime scene dramas and breaks it down to what's real and what isn't. I'm Grant Coffey, and thanks again for watching this episode of Flare Prime.